So today we're going to talk about the little bit that I know about camshafts. I've got a set of 1G, 2G, and 3G intakes, as well as a set of 1G exhausts. Last time we had one of these little chats, I was getting ready to split the case on this engine, doing my first ever engine rebuild, so I'm clearly not an expert on this. I've got it back to this point, but we'll see if I can actually get it running. If I ever do, I'll talk about it a little bit. I have a feeling I'm not going to have this engine in time by the time that we are planning to go race CMP. So it may turn out to be a situation where I'm going to end up running the B bike, but I am going to try like hell to get this A bike running, which is what this engine's from. So I thought this was just going to be straightforward until I started measuring things like an idiot because I always start measuring things. I wanted to do a cam swap, the traditional 2G intakes onto the, or into the intakes of this engine and then switch over the intakes onto the exhaust. What I have found is that it's not as straightforward as I expected. Well, the 1G, 2G could be, but there are some differences and some stuff that I found that uh, has made me think I need to look into this further. So let's look at some camshafts. All right, so these are the camshafts that I'm looking at. I have a set of first gen intakes, set of first gen exhaust. These are the camshafts that I pulled out of this engine. I have a set of second gen intakes and I have a set of third gen intakes. So the camshaft swap is swapping over a set of second gen intakes to replace a set of first gen intakes and then swapping over a set of first gen intakes to replace the exhaust. There are advancements to this with other ones, but I don't think I'm going to be doing them after going through this measurement exercise that I've done. I'm just going to go with the, the standard one of the second gens. So before I get into talking more about the cam swap, camshaft swap, which I'm not going to be doing in this video because I've obviously never done it, so I'm not an expert on it, but I did want to talk about some of the things that I found. One of the things that I heard was that you do not have to change the valve lash if you're just swapping in the exhaust, and that's consistent with what I have been measuring. So the numbers and letters that I have on here, um, A, C, and B, D, every one of these cams is stamped with something right here. So that one says A, and then this one here says B, and then we'll just do one more. That one is an H. All right, so what I found, if you've got an A, B, C, or D, you have a first gen. If you have a F, G, H, or J, you have a second gen. I don't know the full nomenclature on the third gens, but I know the intakes are R and O. I have no idea what the Gladius is. I don't know if they're identical to the third gens. They may be, they may not be, so I can't, I can't speak on that. I also don't know what the other letters are for the exhausts on the Gen 3 because I couldn't find them online. I don't have a set of exhausts for Gen 2, but I saw that they were F, G, H, and J. Why that's important to me, or not important, but kind of just funny to me, is because I kept reciting the alphabet to myself and I kept screwing up the friggin' alphabet. And it's because it's missing two letters. It's missing E and it's missing I. Well, none of these things are stamped with E and I, and that makes sense to me because they wouldn't want to put an E and an I on there because then you'd be talking about intake and exhaust on something that has nothing to do with it. So I think that's why you don't see an E or an I, you see F, G, H, J. All right, so the next set of letters, I'm going to grab one of these because I marked them with an oil pen. I, N, F is telling me this is an intake front, and the fact it says A, I know this is an intake front for a Gen 1. That's what the INF is, and then if I grab a, let me uh, grab one of these, an exhaust is gonna be marked with, oh, that's the one that is missing a little bit of stuff on it. Where are you? EXF, this is an exhaust front, and the fact it says B tells me it is a first gen. So that's how you can identify these camshafts. So the next thing I have here is DS, so DS and DL. What I'm calling that, well, I don't know if they call it that in the manual, but they might. I'm calling that the, the smaller diameter. So you've got your lobe on the camshaft that is going to push on the bucket to push the valve into the cylinder. So it's gonna have a smallest diameter. That's gonna be this diameter here, and it's gonna have a large diameter here. I believe the profiles, at least on the first gen and second gen, are the same. I can't say that for certain, but I'm almost positive the profiles are the same. It's just 
the lift is different. So if you had a different, if it was wider out here, but still came to the same larger diameter, it would have a longer duration. I think the profiles are the same though. So what I measured for the Gen 1 intakes and the Gen 2 intakes is that that smaller diameter was 27.45 millimeters. That was consistent across both of them. That would be consistent with the advice that you don't have to change the valve lash on them. The exhaust, I found 27.35, but I don't want to make a bold statement about that because of the wear that I found on the Gen 1s, and I'll get into that in, this, in a bit. However, the Gen 3, and this is why I don't think it's a direct swap without also swapping the shim under your bucket, is I'm measuring 27.50 on four different spots, like consistently on these things. So I think there is a 500th difference in the smallest diameter on the Gen 3 versus the Gen 1 and Gen 2. And again, I can't speak to anything about uh, what the Gladius is. So it's not a huge deal. You would just need a shim that was 0.025 smaller to account for being able to drop these things in and then it would be a swap. So that's what I had for the small. The larger diameter is where I started to find some weirdness and why I've actually even wanted to make this video. The camshafts that I pulled out of this engine seem to be like, I don't see any signs of visible wear on these things, but I can literally see that this one is different. Like I can see their size differences between the right and the left. So like on the exhaust, I'm measuring 1300s difference on the lobes on one of them on the B cam. I'm measuring 3600s difference on the D cam, which is nuts. And then the intakes have similar wear 1300s and 600s, whereas every other camshaft that I measured were within two to three hundredths of each other. So on the first gens, 0.01 to 0.04 was the biggest difference I saw. Uh, 0.35 to 0.36. And then because I just saw these things were so insane, I did have another set of first gen intakes. So I measured those things and 0.44 to 0.43. All right. So something was going on nuts with my camshafts. I don't know if it's because these things physically wear, but I've heard of these engines going to like 200,000 miles. I figure this engine has probably 35,000 miles, maybe, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 of it on track. I... I just can't imagine that the camshafts wore like that and I'm not seeing visible signs of it. So maybe it's one of those, you know, situations where you get the guy who's grinding it on a Monday and he's a whole lot better than the guy who's uh, grinding it on a Friday just trying to get out of there. I don't know. I don't know enough about these things to tell you why this set of camshafts that I've been running were so out, but they were. All right, so let's go on to the larger one. This is, this is where the camshaft swap actually comes in. So the Gen 1 intakes, I'm, I'm going to use this as an intake. That's this other set that I'm actually going to use. I'm measuring about 35.44, yeah, 35.44, 35.43 as the larger diameter. So the one that I'm going to swap in there is going to be a second gen intake. That's going to take the place of this first gen intake. So the difference of the amount of lift is about point six, well, point five. Let's, let's, let's just call it 0.6 millimeter difference. So the Gen 2 intake has about a 0.6 millimeter higher lift than the Gen 1 intake. So it's not enormous, but it's not insubstantial. So that's why you would want to potentially put in a Gen 2 intake. You're putting in a higher lift value on it. You're also going to swap out the exhaust, which is going to make a hell of a lot bigger difference. So we're going from 33, let's call it 33.3 to 35.4. So you're going 1.9, two millimeter difference. The exhaust difference on the amount of lift is going to be substantial if you do one of these cam swaps. So then I started looking at what if I wanted to potentially do the Gen 3 one? Now, I want to save these for a future build, but I'm like, I'm, I'm here. Maybe I want to do this. All right, so I know that my smallest diameter is bigger, so I need to change shims. I'm changing shims anyway, but you would have to change swims, shims. You can't just swap in the other one. The difference between a Gen 2 intake 
and a Gen 3 intake is about another 0.3 millimeters. So going from 36.02 to 36.35. That's the difference that you're ultimately looking at. So if you went from straight Gen 1, you're going from 35.4 to 36.3. You're almost getting an additional one millimeter of difference. My understanding is the biggest difference on the Gen 1 versus Gen 2 engines on why there is such a horsepower difference, and it's not like it's huge, but I mean, it's like four horsepower, is because the Gen 1 camshafts were sent very conservative. So an easy gain is to swap in the Gen 2 stuff. I think the other part of that horsepower difference, and maybe it's not outright horsepower, but the speed it takes to get to the horsepower is the Gen 2 flywheel starter sprag is so much lighter, just like from the factory, that I gotta imagine that accounts for a fair amount of difference on the uh, the Gen 2 versus Gen 1 engines and because I'm not worried about uh, this Maybe I will just run this as a fucking super sport. Who knows? Maybe I'll just put the original ones back in. But anyway, that's what I've learned about the differences between the Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 camshafts, and then also throw in some of the exhausts. I got to reiterate, my way of measuring this was not the absolute most accurate. I didn't use an outside micrometer on this because I don't have an accurate one that does between 0 and 1 inches. I only have an accurate one above that. So I used my digital caliper to do that. However, I'm pretty consistent on being able to get these readings. I can tell you that the intake and exhaust on the camshafts I pulled out of that engine somehow appear to be worn or they are just wrong. And then because they don't match up with like anything else and anything, everything else looks very consistent. So uh, that's the bit that I know about camshafts, I'm gonna be following this guide that somebody put, somebody made the camshaft swap guide a long time ago, and then all the pictures were lost to photo bucket. Well, somebody on the SB Rider forums recreated that thing. It's got all the pictures now. One of the most legendary posts anybody's ever made. Dude just comes in to a long standing thread where nobody can find any of these pictures anymore. He's like, yeah, I went through internet archive and I just re recreated the whole thing. And uh, he has two posts, this post and then one post just saying thank you to somebody, which is, I, I feel like that's exactly what the internet is for. Just like freaking heroes like that. Which is why I like making these videos. Uh, not that I'm doing anything nearly as awesome as this guy did. But uh, it's, it's why I try to talk about these um, silly things that drive me insane. And it's why I can't figure out how to actually ride a bike. I just spend time measuring shit. So, you watch this far. Thanks for watching.